Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. We're back with the Ted Show. You know how much I love musical guests. I love creatives. Not that I don't love you business people, but creatives speak to me. I love somebody who pours their whole heart and soul into their passion. And almost all creatives pour their heart and soul into their passion. And so I'm excited to welcome Stefan PVDS to the Ted Show. What's up, Stefan? How are you doing today? Hey, Ted. Thanks for having me. It's, I'm excited to be here. I'm super excited to have you. I was telling you before we went live that two things immediately caught my eye when you filled out the little form to get on the show. Your name, uh, which included letters at the end instead of a last name with any kind of vowels, which I loved. And then your website, sadsongstefan.com. Uh, so total intrigue from the beginning. So we'll talk about that, but uh, the audience loves an origin story. They like to hear where you're from, um, how you got here, were you always musically inclined? And we'll go through all of that. Um, so welcome and give us a little origin story on Stefan PVDS. <laughs> totally, well, thanks again for having me. Um, but yeah, my parent, my dad is a doctor and my mom is the mother of four and like an it was an amazing journalist before she had to, you know, dedicate herself more to, to us, luckily for us. And so all that to say that my upbringing was pretty nomadic. So like I was born in Oxford, England, and then bounced between England and Baltimore, Maryland for up until I was about five or six years old because my dad was doing his residency uh, in between the two. And then we moved to Florida. We moved to Jacksonville actually when I was five, I want to say, and lived there until I went to middle school. And from there, we moved to Alabama, to Birmingham, which is where I feel like I'm from, like the formative years. Um, high school, middle school, et cetera. And then from there, I went to college in St. Louis at Washington University in St. Louis. Nice. And, since then, and since then, I've bounced around as well between you know New York City, now I'm in LA, uh, where my career is based. So that has been my you know geographical upbringing. But in terms did you of music- know you, Did you know you had talent? Like, were you the performer in front of the family? It sounds like a family of six, right? So four kids, parents. Were you the performer, like every t every chance you had a microphone or a pretend microphone, you sang? How did you know? How early did you know that you loved being a creative and, and music? Well, it's a good question. I was actually super shy growing up, but until I went to high school when I came out of my shell. But actually my whole family is very musical. Both of my sisters are professional violists. Um, I, I started playing classical guitar when I was four because we were watching Back to the Future and the Marty McFly scene where he plays Johnny B. Good, Johnny B. Good, I was like, Mom, I want to do that. That looks awesome. And so then they kind of put me in the classical instead of rock to start. And so I grew up playing that. Um, I never really started writing songs until I was in college. When I went to college, music kind of took a hiatus. Um, I was focusing more on academics. And then towards the end of my, you know, my late junior year, I met a songwriter. I was, you know, getting ready to start doing the job application thing, and nothing was super exciting to me. But at the same what time, was your degree in? sorry, what was your degree in? It was in a program at WashU called um, Psychology, Neuroscience, and Philosophy. Um, so basically, nothing to do with music. <laughs> no, nothing to do with music. But it did. I was going to say that as it, we kind of studied a lot of the same things from different viewpoints. So it kind of gave me like a lot of. Um, background in different perspectives and thinking about things in different ways. So that helps with songwriting. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you perform in college toward the end? Did you, when did you like begin? Because it's one thing to be a shower singer or a family singer. It's another thing to actually get on stage and perform. Well, like I, when I was playing classical guitar as a young kid, I was performing a lot. And then I was also in like the school jazz band on trumpet and I was in like a punk funk band with my friends where I played drums. So I loved performing and I loved playing. Um, but then again, like I had never really sung or, you know, performed original songs that I had written until college. So I still love performing, but doing my own, you know, work on, you know, on stage live in front of an audience was really new to me and really exciting. So I've always loved performing and I love, that aspect of music. Um, but as I, started, as I started to write my own songs, it kind of meshed into like, not just performing, but performing my own works as well. What's that like going, do you, are you a, a single songwriter, a collaborative songwriter? I feel like 
you know, 2020 made a lot of people pivot. Um, and so there's a lot of collaboration going on. And then I just had somebody on the show who's a songwriter that literally only sings what she writes. It's a good question. I think, I think like a lot of artists, it's kind of an evolution constantly. It's in flux. Like I, I started writing with that songwriter that I mentioned and pretty much mostly just wrote with her. And then eventually I started only writing alone, you know, like geography took us apart. And then I only wrote alone. I was just, at the time I had a corporate job. So I was kind of living a double life where off the clock, I'd be home writing music alone at night till, you know, all hours of the morning. And so I got really used to writing alone for one to two years and collaboration was honestly pretty scary. But then more recently I've become so much more in love with collaborating than I used to be. And most honestly, I would say now I write more with other people than I do alone. Um, but that's kind of where the sad song Stefan name came from. Cause like, I'm, I'm not like a necessarily like a brooding moody guy. Um, but when you write it, when I, when you write alone, it kind of has you explore and be very introspective about your own experience, which can lead to some more, you know, angsty or, or sad or, um, introspective content. And then a lot of times writing collaboratively can lead to that, or it can lead to a lot more fun things just because, you know, the energy in the room is upbeat and people are happy and smiling and at least it's like some more, you know, danceable fun things as well. The sad song. So, and we'll get to your name in a minute. Cause I've already had two people ask me about that. Um, we, the, the sad song, Stefan. So that immediately when I saw that, I thought fascinating. Does he only sing sad ballads? I guess there's sad rock songs too, or sad punk songs. Um, that's a big choice, I think, to brand yourself that way. I love it, but was it difficult? And do you run into any like challenges? Because obviously not everything you sing, Stefan, is a sad song, I don't think. Um, <laughs> so talk about that a little bit, because that's a really cool way to identify yourself and separate yourself out. What was the thought process of going with that specifically? To be honest, it was super organic. I was just at one point trying to think of a better Instagram handle and that was funny to me. <laughs> and if you and if you know me, you know that again, like I write a lot of sad songs, but my personality isn't necessarily like that. Um, so it was kind of like a sarcastic, it has truth to it, but it's also kind of sarcastic in the sense that like, Again, I'm not just the sad guy moping around. So it turned in, <laughs> not so at all. It slowly became more and more of like a part of you know my brand, I guess. And it just kind of rolls off the tongue. I think it's funny. And then the more you get to know me, the more you can expect any a, a wide variety of songs and and you know atmospheres in my music, whether it's sad or whether it's happy or whether it's funny or sarcastic. Um, I just thought that Sad Song Stefan was a funny way to juxtapose my personality and my art. Yes. I, actually, it's it's smart. It's very smart because it immediately made me go, okay, I got to check this out. And I don't do a lot of uh, research because I like to be organic and ask the questions as they go. Um, I can tell you though, when I saw the wet, when I saw the name of the website, I'm like, oh gosh, is he going to come on? He's going to be all dark. It's not, you're not gonna be able to see anything. He's gonna have a face. Like I was imagining somebody who lives like Eeyore <laughs> um, and whose persona, right? Cause it doesn't have to be the reality. Your persona, your stage person as being sad. And I was very pleasantly surprised obviously that it's not all that, but it's very smart cause it attracts people immediately. You wanna check it out. You wanna, you wanna learn more uh, like your last name. So. Tell us about Stefan PVDS. Yeah. So that's actually an abbreviation of my last name, which is Pajaro van der Stadt. Um, it's my dad's last name, Pajaro, and my mom's last name, van der Stadt, put together, um, which is like super unique. And, you know, I love it, but it, may, it can be difficult for just for people to remember how to spell it or, you know, for my tax forms or for, you know, my driver's <laughs> license. <laughs> it's 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 been a really cool talking point and fun last name but also has led to some complications in, in some aspects <laughs> i would imagine because that is that's um that's a big mouthful so i can't <laughs> even imagine school it's school what it i mean they <laughs> that must have been hard when the teacher's calling you i wouldn't even know how to say that oh, i guess if i read it i'd sound it out but that's a I mean, long name 
in school, it was often like they would be reading out the names, and then after, once there was like a hesitation and like confusion, I was like, I'm here. Like that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us about. 2020 for you and what's going on in 2021 for a lot of musicians, a lot of creatives, it was a pivot year. It was a shift year. You had to kind of figure out what it is you wanted to do in a different world where everything was this, lots of Zoom, no performing live at the time. Um, what did you do? Did you do anything different? Did you go more into your songwriting or did you continue to do stuff and kind of adapt or a nice combination of all of that? It was a it was a combination for sure. I think once quarantine started, you know, amidst all the chaos and the honestly tragedy, um, just being at home all the time honestly is not that hard for me. I enjoy being in my studio just working all the time. So it was kind of an ex like a good excuse, for lack of a better way of putting it, a good excuse for me to just always be at home creating. And I, again, I like to collaborate a lot, but because of the beginning, people started to not collaborate too much. So it also right. allowed me to put my personal art projects into overdrive. And so I pushed a lot of songs forward and I actually had my first release on the 12th of February um, called Meet the Parents, um, which is not a sad song. So it's coming out of my first, <laughs> my first couple of releases is gonna be like a bit more upbeat. And then the third one that I'm planning on releasing that I'm gonna play for you later today is one of those more ballads and perspective ballad -y vibes. Um, but yeah, so it allowed me to really own my production, my songwriting, my or my personal art project and kind of formulate how I wanted to get that off the ground. Um, so 2021, lots of music coming out for sure. Was it, do you get inspired by um, personal stuff that goes on, stuff you see on TV? Where do you get, we had a lot of questions about that before we went live. I think there's a lot of um, aspiring songwriters uh, that pay attention to these shows. Did you, do you just, or do you just, it's a feeling and you just go with it? Is it all autobiographical? It's really what I think people want to know. And if not, where do you get your inspiration from? That's a great, those are great questions. I think I would say more of the ballad songs are, I wouldn't say autobiographical, but certainly, you know, drawn from personal experience along with, you know, narrative. It's a story at the end of the day that may or may not include all facts. Um, some of the more upbeat songs are more just like feelings. They're just kind of like, you know, I, so, someone said it one time really well that like, it can be really scary to release music because a song that you write is kind of just an exploration of that feeling in that moment, you know, as you do your best you can in those whatever, six to eight hours and you get the song done and you can edit it down the road, but that's a feeling. It's like a small piece of who you are as a person. But a lot of times people can be judged or represented entirely off of one song. And so I think something that's been valuable for me is to like not be afraid of that and just allow, trust the audience to take what they will and be willing to just continue to put out, share music that, you know, has as much truth about me and the world and relatable experience as I can, as I can put in it. You're good at this interview stuff, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> um, very well thought out responses. And, you know, like I tell everybody, we don't do any prep, so excellent. All right, so let's talk about the music because it's time. Okay. And that's how fast it goes. So tell us um, what you are going to perform, give us a little background, and then I'm gonna take me off the screen and we're gonna listen to Stefan PVDS perform. Totally. Well, uh, before I jump into that, I just wanna also mention, because I forgot to say this in the 2020, part when you're about with that question that another thing I got to do that was really cool is collaborative work via zoom and stuff like that with a couple buddies Ziggy Stry and Maze Rockwell and we actually started a group called group chat which is another project that I'm a part of now which is more R&B hip-hop soul um, and that was an amazing experience because that was actually the first music I've first released um, in 2020 and so having that and being able to balance that with my own project has allowed me to explore the different elements of music that I really, really love. And so I would encourage people to not just um, commit only and be you know, tunnel visioned into one lane and to allow yourself to explore different atmospheres because I, you know, there's nothing I've appreciated more than being able to explore that as well as my own artistry um, for so many reasons. So cool. Yeah. All right, here you go. Stefan, what are we doing? Tell me. All right. So right now I'm gonna play a song called Every Ocean, which is I'm, I'm planning on releasing probably end of spring-ish. I, I have a song out, Meet the Parents, 
that came out in February. I have another one coming out in April. And so I'm planning on releasing this one probably May or June. And this one is one I wrote actually a couple of years ago, but it's, it's about getting through tough times and just having, you know, belief that they will end. They're not going to you know last forever. And so having that belief in the sense that as hard as it, as hard as it is, as it is right now, which is very relevant in 2020, 2021 with the pandemic, um, it will get better. And that can at least, you know, help you get through it in the moment when it's, when it seems darkest. Um, so this song is called every. Awesome. Walking away, thinking it over, holding the weight of your words. Well, you can sharpen the blade, but I'm already open, spilled it all. I know there's a little dirt on my name Some marks never get erased That old skin is shedding I'm rising from the wreckage No, I haven't been in the best place Oh, I lost my head and fell from grace But I'm in the right direction All of the time that it takes all the commotion it makes every ocean run me back to shore everything lost all that's broken falls into place on beautiful moment if we find a way we will find a way we're caught in the break and it's slowing us around Sneaking deeper now We just wait until we hit the ground I know there's a couple things that I did Most people would never forgive That old skin is shedding And I'm rising from the wreckage No, I haven't been the best speed Oh, I wonder if anyone really can be But I'm in the right direction And I'm telling you All of the time that it takes All the commotion it makes Every ocean run me back to shore Everything lost, all that's broken Falls into place, one beautiful moment If we find a way, we will find a way Whoa. Whoa. All of the time that it takes, all the commotion it makes, every ocean run your back to shore. So good. All right. So initial impressions. I love I love the acoustic for your voice. It's very acoustic sounding, right? <laughs> I love the acoustic for your voice and for me to be able to listen to the words you sang. And I thought the words were amazing. Uh, so I felt, um, I didn't feel sad, but I did feel a little angst. <laughs> I, I felt, um, it was just really good. Your voice is clean and pure. I'm not trying to sound like Paula Abdul, but I, I just loved the tone of your voice. It was great. And I loved the words. I really closed my eyes and listened. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So when you Thank sing you. that song, what are you feeling when you're singing it? Because you're obviously emoting. You can see when you perform. Um, you're into the song. You're passionate about it. 
What are you feeling when you're doing that? Are you feeling like sad song, Stefan, or is there other stuff going on? Totally. I mean, it's kind of like, like a montage, in a, like in a movie, kind of a lot of times. I mean, when when it's a, when it's a song like that that has a lot of meaning to me. Um, not that other songs don't have as much meaning, but they don't. Not not all songs necessarily have the same amount of like depth. I would say, and so when there is one that does, and I'm able to tap into how it feels. Um, I feel a million things. I have flashbacks to moments in my life. I have flashbacks to the moments where I wrote, was writing the song, good times, bad times. But most of all with this one though, I have like a sort of nostalgic hope when I'm singing it because, you know, based on the content of the song, it's like, I hope we can get through this and I believe that we will. And so, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. I loved it. I really did. Thank you. I did. All right, so tell them how they can reach you the best way. We've got the website scrolling, but tell them where they can get your music and learn more about you and learn more about uh, the music that you're releasing. Totally, yeah. So my Instagram handle is at Sad Song Stefan. Same with Facebook, at Sad Song Stefan. And then you can find me on all music streaming platforms um, if you just type Stefan PVDS. And Stefan with an F, not a PH. A lot of people like the PH. Um, my website right down there, Sad Song Stefan. Yeah, hit me up. You know, feel free to DM me, see what's up. And uh, I, you know, thanks for thanks for tuning in. I, I want to meet all you guys. I would love to, to chat and you know meet you as well. So fantastic! Thanks so that was really good, Stefan. Thank you. All right, guys. Sad song. Sad song. Stefan. But like he said, I've tagged him and everything. You can find him. Just do Stefan PVDS. Um, in any of your social media search engines and support our artists. Our mm -hmm. artists need us to support them. We're shifting, but it's still awesome to have talent and uh, out there performing and we need to get behind you guys. So thank you uh, so much for being on the show, Stefan PVDS. Thank you so much for having me, Ted. It was great to meet you. It was awesome. All right, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. See you soon. Stefan PVDS. Sadsongstefan.com. I want you to check it out. All right. Bye, guys. See everybody later.